Before the Eiffel Tower was built, the tallest building in the world was the Washington Monument, which stood at a remarkable 169 meters above ground level. The Eiffel Tower upon its completion toppled the Washington Monument as the tallest structure in the world and would go on to hold this record for well over 40 years until the Chrysler Building was finished in 1930. The tower has become a global landmark and a powerful and distinctive symbol of Paris, and by extension France, and it's presently one of the most recognizable structures in the world. But have you ever wondered why France decided to build a tower that's almost twice as tall as the Washington Monument? Or how much such an architectural masterpiece would have cost to erect? You definitely want to watch this video till the very end, as we bring you all of these details and more. Ready? Let's dive in. Hey there, and welcome to your favorite history channel, where we bring you captivating stories about the most remarkable events, establishments, and personalities in history. Make sure to like this video, hit the subscribe button, and smash that notification bell to receive notifications of when we post more fascinating videos like this one. We'd also love to hear your opinions in the comments. Now, back to today's video. The Eiffel Tower is 300.65 meters tall and 324 meters if you include the antenna spire. The tower was built from 1887 to 1889 by French engineer Gustave Eiffel, whose company specialized in building metal frameworks and structures. Ahead of the World Fair in Paris in 1889 and in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution, a competition was launched in France to design a tower that would become the tallest structure in the world and stretch well over a thousand feet into the sky. More than 100 plans were submitted, and the Centennial Committee accepted that of the noted bridge engineer Gustave Eiffel. Upon completion, the Eiffel Tower would serve as one of the main attractions at the Paris World's Fair in 1889, as well as the entrance gateway to the exposition. Two chief engineers in Eiffel's company, Emile Nougier and Maurice Cochlin, had the idea for a very tall tower in June 1884. The tower was to be designed like a large pylon, with four columns of latticework girders separated at the base and coming together at the top, and joined to each other by more metal girders at regular intervals. So on September 18, 1884, Eiffel registered a patent for a new configuration, allowing the construction of metal supports and pylon cables of exceeding a height of 300 meters, and this marked the beginning of the birth of the Eiffel Tower. The tower, which was built almost entirely of open lattice wrought iron, aroused amazement and skepticism, as well as very strong opposition from some Parisians, notably on aesthetic grounds. They voiced concerns that the tower was going to constitute an eyesore to the elegance and refined beauty of the city's landscape, and some Parisians even feared that the tower might topple over and crash down on their homes. But as construction began and the Eiffel Tower gradually started to rise into the sky, it was simply impossible not to admire the audacity of its architecture and design. Every Parisian and visitors immediately fell under the charm of the Eiffel Tower, and more than 2 million people toured it in the first year alone. First called the 320 meter tower, then the pylon of 320 meters, it soon took the name of the man who built it, Gustave Eiffel. The tower opened to the public the same day as the World's Fair on May 15, 1889. Although the tower was planned to be dismantled 20 years after it was built, it's lasted pretty well and is now over 130 years old, transcending into a real icon of Paris. Construction work on the tower began on January 28, 1887, and in contrast to much older monuments, the tower was erected in slightly above two years, with a small labor force and at a much lesser cost. Making use of his advanced knowledge of the behavior of metal arch and metal truss forms under loading, Eiffel designed a light, airy, but strong structure that was itself a revolution in civil engineering and architectural design. Eiffel's design and methods were very much ahead of their time, and all the elements and materials used in constructing the tower first had to be prepared and assembled in Eiffel's factory on the outskirts of Paris. At the factory, 150 workers worked for two years, melting and crafting the metals that would be used for construction, assembling the framework of this iconic lattice tower. The final design of the Eiffel Tower called for more than 18,000 pieces of puddle and prefabricated iron, a type of wrought iron used in construction. 2.5 million rivets, 7,300 tons of iron in total, and 6,000 tons of paint. Between 150 and 300 workers worked on the construction site continuously for two years. 
The first stage of construction was completed on April 1st, 1888. To achieve that, they had to first lay the foundations, and this involved creating two meter thick concrete slabs under each of the feet, and putting them seven meters underground. Due to two of the tower's feet being actually bordered by the river Seine, the engineers worried that water could creep in and cause the structure to grow weak and crumble someday. So to avoid such an occurrence, they created metal shoe structures to keep the water out. It only took five months to build the foundations, but 26 months to finish assembling the metal pieces of the tower. Next, they constructed the legs of the tower, but they needed to ensure that the legs were built simultaneously to avoid ending up with a leaning tower of Paris, which would have been disastrous. To achieve the needed balance, engineers used hydraulic jacks under each of the different legs, raising and lowering them to make sure that the first floor was completely balanced and horizontal. In building the body of the tower, they used 18,000 different parts which were put together on site using 2.5 million thermally assembled rivets. As the body of the tower rose in height, engineers adopted and used creeper cranes which ran up the legs of the tower. The Eiffel Tower was completely built using puddled iron and no steel was included in its framework. Eiffel used a rather novel and advanced method known as the prefab system in constructing the Eiffel Tower, which ultimately allowed them to build the tower in a record time of two years, two months and five days. The iron used to build the Eiffel Tower went from the refining process called puddling, which eliminated the excess carbon when the ore was melted. To further protect the iron from corrosion, the tower was completely covered with a thick coat of paint upon completion and which has to be renewed every seven years, a repainting schedule that was recommended by Eiffel himself. The tower has since been repainted 18 times. Even to contemporary eyes, the Eiffel Tower is unique, but in the late 19th century, nothing had been seen like it. The Eiffel Tower avoided being dismantled as was earlier planned in 1909 by transforming into one of the most loved and iconic structures in France's history soon after its completion. City officials opted to save it after recognizing its value as a radio telegraph station. Several years later, during World War I, the Eiffel Tower would go on to serve a crucial role, doubling as a secret agent of sorts. The French military used the tower's radio and telegraph center to communicate with ground troops and battleships, relaying Zeppelin alerts and for dispatching emergency troop reinforcements, as well as intercepting enemy messages. In 1916, the tower picked up a message about a female spine known as Mata Harry. Using the captured information, the French military tracked down and arrested the agent. The tower would also escape destruction a second time during World War II. Hitler initially ordered the demolition of the city's most cherished symbol, but the command was never carried out. Also, during the German occupation of Paris, French resistance fighters famously cut the Eiffel Tower's elevator cable so that the Nazis had to climb the stairs. Over the years, the Eiffel Tower has been the site of numerous high-profile stunts, ceremonial events, and even scientific experiments. The Eiffel Tower has also inspired more than 30 replicas and similar structures in various cities around the world. Construction of the Eiffel Tower cost approximately 8 million French gold francs in 1889 an amount equaling $1.5 million at the time. If adjusted for inflation, the Eiffel Tower would cost around $48 million to erect today, a sum which remains rather meager for a historical monument that size. Now one of the most recognizable structures on the planet, the Eiffel Tower underwent a major facelift in 1986 and welcomes more visitors than any other paid monument in the world. An estimated 7 million people per year visit the tower, with some 500 employees being responsible for its daily operations and working in its restaurants, manning its elevators, ensuring its security, and directing the eager crowds flocking the tower's platforms to enjoy the panoramic view of the City of Lights. The Eiffel Tower has attracted over 200 million visitors, who visited simply to marvel at its unique engineering design, and in terms of paid visitors, the Eiffel Tower ranks number one in the world.